some of our animals that are skittish have been standing closer to the fence. The keepers of Reddit. How are the animals acting differently now that there are no visitors to the zoo? Most of our animals are happy as long as we can keep their routines, feeding times etc. For some they need a little extra. We do public encounters with our koalas, wombats and snakes among others, so we spend an hour or so a day cuddling and handling these animals to keep them happy. A few of our koalas really fret if they don't get their cuddles. Otherwise we just try to continue to spend time with animals that are expecting human interaction and of course we can take things for walks around the place, like I'm sure you've seen at other zoos. Our wombats love a run and sniff. Dingoes as well. For a lot of our animals, having the ability to interact with guests is actually extremely important. Even for primates to be able to play with kids through the glass, they are missing out on a lot of enrichment. Guests keep a lot of the monkeys entertained. I watch our guests all day long show our marmosets and capuchin selfie cameras and they love to see their reflection. Guests will also show videos on their phones to animals and the monkeys totally enjoy it. We have a rescue cockatoo named Ro who sings row 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 your boat to guests. When little kids dance and sing it to her, she gets really excited and feeds off their energy. So do our other cockatoos on exhibit. But now without guests to show off for, every now and then, when it's quiet we'll hear her start row row row. And then she stop and huffs a bit and gets really quiet and sad because she has no one to sing to. Some of our animals really miss having kids to show off for. You also have to remember that animals in zoos for the most part have grown up totally accustomed to being around people 24 over 7. They are not wild animals at all really. They've grown up in a very different social dynamic. Quite a few animals get noticeably depressed in the winter months every year when we have few guests. And then perk up in the spring when we get busy. In our local zoo the apes started to miss the visitors, so they brought in an artist in who's now just painting in the empty monkey house, so the apes have someone to watch. They need a TV in Sesame Street. Just put on a Planet of the Apes marathon and they'll be happy for hours. Don't give them ideas. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button to support this channel. Due to temporary staff cuts. They no longer have the people to regularly walk the wombats. Some of the wombats are holding the keepers personally responsible. Imagine having a 20 kilogram chunk of muscle with big rodent teeth mad at you. Can confirm. I'm not happy with the current situation. I'm an aquarium keeper, and I've certainly noticed a change. Fish are not as stressed as they used to be as there are no longer children stomping around and banging on glass screaming Nemo, Nemo, it's Nemo at every clone fish. We brought some of our younger penguins down to let them watch the fish, and they were intrigued but confused as to why they couldn't catch them through the glass. Our octopus has become much more friendly as well, and instead of hiding all day from people, enjoys playing with small baby toys or solving food puzzles. It's been nice. I wish there were guidelines people had to sign to behave at zoos before entering, but at the same time, they are the lifeline we so desperately need to keep functioning. Fellow octopus keeper here. Without the crowd scaring her into her cave, our GPO has gotten straight up feisty. She's so active, I've encouraged our parrot keepers to go past her when taking the birds on walks, just for a little extra visual stimulation. She's got quite the love affair with one of the cockatoos. We just have a little bimmock, and I think that s slash she has really enjoyed the new lead I installed over their tank. I try and change it up throughout the day, to give her a bit more fun when nothing is really going on. She seems to enjoy blue a lot. My girlfriend is a zookeeper and animal behaviorist. She says their animals are becoming stressed. One of their African grey bads has been plucking his own feathers. She also mentioned that, because they can't touch many of the animals due to the virus potentially spreading to another zookeeper, many of the animals are looking and acting depressive, not eating well, etc. 
as a zookeeper coordinator I've been working at the now closed zoo almost every day for the past month. Animals that are free roaming peacocks, iguanas are more active, and follow keepers around like they usually do with visitors. Most of the others don't show much change in behavior. Although birds like swans and flamingos are using the edges of their habitats more. True. I haven't found much change in pets or those animals that are being well taken care of. I have noticed that this has mostly affected stray animals whose only source of food was by eating all they found on the street slash parks. Since nobody is around, they don't get food. I do my best by feeding like 10 to 12 stray dogs who come to eat at our farm. It makes my day watching the meat. Not as a keeper, but I hear the lions out more from my house now. Weirdly reassuring to wake up to and realize the world is still going on. Wait what? Do you live on the plains of Africa, next to the GW Zoo, or do you own lions? Nothing that exotic. Sorry to disappoint. I live very close to a large zoo in the UK no Carol Baskin-esque dramas. The cities gotten pretty quiet with all the events going on, so the zoo noises are added more prominent. Can just about see the orangutans rolling about and playing hide and seek with their blankets outside if I shimmy out the velox onto the roof. <coughs> Finally a thread I can answer. Not a whole lot of change, but animals definitely missing out some enrichment of seeing guests, especially the otters that follow the kids in the glass underwater. Tackin, manned wolves, bison, gibbons, bopies, lions, etc all are about the same. Some of our animals that are skittish have been standing closer to the fence where guests usually are zebras, gazelle which is nice. It's kinda this weird balance of being both more and less stressed. On the one side, I don't have to worry about keeper talks or BTS tours and I have more time to get everything done and spend more time with animals. On the other side we are skeleton crude, and there's less of us to care for the whole zoo, so I'm working a lot more in areas I don't usually cover as often. There's one kangaroo that still tries to box me, while the emu is shifting. The one peacock still really doesn't like taking his medications of course. I have noticed that the crows in the city are behaving a bit differently as well, and are being a lot braver lol. I'm just trying to see the penguins walk around the zoo in person man. That's all I want. You can meet the penguins at the zoo where I used to work. It's just outside Chicago. If you happen to find yourself there after this quarantine. They get to choose whether or not to interact with you of course. But they will generally choose to because you have fish. Which is their favorite quality in a person. My wife works at the gift shop for our zoo and the other day we had to go move some stuff around in the store because due to some heavy rains, it had flooded a bit. Of course we took a lap around the empty park other than the keepers and few maintenance workers and found that all the animals were really active and playful. A lot of them seemed really curious about us too. I'm sure they get used to seeing crowds every day and were starving for attention. I'm late to the thread. So I'm sure this will get buried. But I work for a very large, very busy as a zoo. I work with the ambassador animals. So they are animals that are very used to the public. Pretty much like what everyone else has said. The animals are mostly confused that there aren't any people. Our petting zoo animals in particular are super needy. The second they see or hear us, they all come running over and start crying for attention. We are trying to give all the animals as much attention as possible, but we are down to a bare bones crew, so it's not as much as we would like. What I wanted to add, though, because I think it's incredibly interesting, is that we are collecting fecal samples from some of the animals to be tested for cortisol levels, which is a pretty good indicator of stress levels. That way, when guests come back, we can take samples for comparison, to see how much guests impact stress. I think it's really cool that we are taking this opportunity to see what we can learn about how guests impact the animals, and to see if there are potentially things we can do even better to improve the lives of the animals in our care. We were really hoping to do some behavioral studies too about things like activity levels, amount of the enclosure being utilized, etc. That are also important considerations for their welfare. 
but unfortunately we just don't have the time or staffing. We are doing some behavioral observations to answer this. Anecdotally some animals seem to miss people watching, while others don't seem to care, while still others seem to be more relaxed.